guys, Thomas the Creator here, back again. Now the engine is finally mounted. I have uh, uh, mounted, used the plate from the quad, original bottom mount, cut that loose, welded that on the other si underside. And uh, the rear mount is also, also the mount from the quad that I cut loose. And I'm planning to use the top mount also. In the quad they didn't use this, but I'm planning to use this. Uh, I don't know how yet. I think I'm going to incorporate it with the steering on some way. I'm saving this for later. But now it's time to start with the rear four link. And I'm, instead of using heim joints, which I think is too expensive, I use this uh, bushings that uh, is really, really cheap. And you can easily make your own heim joints. And especially easy if you don't want to have a thread to adjust them. And especially on the low, lower control arms, I don't think I'm going to need any adjustability. So this is going to be perfect there. So now it's time to start making lower control arms for the four link. Here is some be better view of the engine mounts and uh, you can see how I used uh, the old plates from the quad. There you go. Now all the parts are ready for the lower control arms. This is just to show, uh, obviously it's going to be longer than this pipe. but. 20 millimeter pipe and I'm going to make some uh, triangles because I can't just have a 20 millimeter pipe. I'm going to have to strengthen this, but strengthen this. But this is going to be the bearing house. I found this pipe uh, that fits perfectly over the bearings, or I don't know what you call them really. But uh, they are some kind of bushings or bearing, I'm not bearing, but ah, whatever. So I'm going to press them in like that. Then I made this, little stubs. I'm going to weld on and then I'm going to put them in the pipe and weld them there. So it would be just like a heim joint, but you can't adjust it. Like a fixed heim joint. And no, I'm from Sweden and bought this in Sweden, but in dollars they costed like oh, three or four dollars. So it's a lot cheaper than Heim joints. Now I cut the pipes also, so now they are ready for welding. I'm going, as I usually do, put them in my fixture table that I've taken from my CNC router. So uh, let's start mounting him in the fixture.
your control arms are welded and now it's time to make the mounts on the chassis on the rear axle and uh, I also they of course there are going to be uh, mounts for the shocker absorbers on the lowers but uh, I'm not sure yet what kind of shocks I'm going to use or the position or so so I'm, I'm leaving that for now maybe I'll put in a little pipe or something here too to make it sturdier we have to see but now it's time to mount it go now the mounts for the lower control arms are ready and I also made a hole here cause maybe I'm gonna mount the rear shock absorber there but just in case it's I thought it was good to have an extra hole if I want to reconfigure the axles or something so yeah now it's time to weld them in place Now, finally, the lower control arms of the four link is finished. I just spot welded them, and, but uh, it's looking good. And now it's time to make the, the upper control arms. So I have to make a mounting point about here, and same on the other side, and uh, here, because they are going to be diagonal. So let's begin fabricating these and I'm so anxious to take it off the jig and see how it looks on the floor and put some wheels on it, yeah. on the chassis just tacked it there to try it out there you go on the other side and I angle them towards almost towards the centrum of the rear axle so my first four links it's very excited to see how it works there you go now all the details for the upper control arms are uh, made so now I just have to mount the upper control arm in the welding fixture and then we're good to go Mounted in the fixture and ready for some welding Now it's time to press in the bushings in the ends Then they are ready Then we lock it in place with a little uh, punch here. This I tried before and it really stuck with this one.
There we go. Now it's stuck. This is how it's going to be. I haven't welded it yet, but I'm going to tack it now. And then we're going to try and see how the angles get. Exciting! Now it's finally time to take it out of the jig for the first time and see how the rear axle behaves. Yeah! It seems like the distance between, between the axles changed quite a lot from uh, max from the max uh, bottom to max top. So maybe I have to change the linkage. Uh, I have to investigate some what 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 it what it is that make it that way but otherwise I have really good flex and now you see I have a big uh, uh. here we go I tested it now on the ground with oh it's going to be a little higher than this but uh, the angles seems really good so uh, I don't have to adjust anything. Uh, I just have to make some washers to go here uh, around all the screws so that it can flex properly without touching anything. So, time to do some washers and keep welding the frame and start making the upper. Uh, front control arm, so I have a rolling chassis, but that will have to go to the next video.